Welcome to the Hire Yourself Podcast. My name is Pete Gilfo, and I'm here with my business partner, Nat Truitt. We're all about helping people become entrepreneurs and become better business people. Good morning, Nat. <laughs> wow, when I hear you you're, with your enthusiasm, I just want to say we're here to pump you up. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Well, I've already had two cups of coffee, so we are rolling today. So, nice. You know, Nat, I'm super excited. Uh, did you see the announcement yesterday? I don't know which one. There's so many. Yeah, so many <laughs> announcements, right? The uh, Elon Musk announced the Tesla Model S Plaid. They're releasing it. Okay. What is yes. what's the Plaid all about? I don't even know. Oh, the I Plaid is that. like the ultimate car, right? The okay. my matter of fact, it's my next car. So this car, the Model S Plaid has uh, the ability to go 400 miles in terms of range. Okay. Number two is it can go up to 200 miles an hour. And most importantly, because you really need this in a small suburb, is it goes to zero to 60 in less than two seconds. Wow. So uh, did you tell your wife about this yet? Well, not exactly. So, <laughs> you know, I think it's like $120,000. So I, I may have a little trouble getting that past the, uh, <laughs> the boss. Yeah. You can finance that. Well, actually, I heard that those Teslas are supposed to go for like a million miles, so you could probably rationalize it pretty easily. Well, yeah, my, she doesn't really buy into my rationale because I always have a way to try to push it. And so, yeah, yeah. but uh, no, it, uh, it's I actually have one of those Mach-E's on order. Okay. Right? Uh, so so that's I'd have the to... new Ford Mustang. Is that yeah. what that is? Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, that's uh, I think zero to 60 pretty fast, but but not nothing like the Plaid. Right. Yeah. So. What's your uh, buddy, the Ford dealer, going to say if you end up with the Mackey and right next to it, you have the plaid, the Tesla Plaid? No, I, I don't think I'd have both. So I, I okay. think uh, <laughs> that might not be good, right? So I'm a, a Ford guy, so uh, I might offend him. So I, I don't know if we'll be able to get the, the, the Plaid, boat. but we'll, I, we'll see. So Yeah, I saw there's a guy in my neighborhood that's got the uh, Mackey, and it does look really cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's cool. You know, zero to 60, I think 3.5 seconds or something like that. So wow. yeah, that's about all you need. It's a good size. <laughs> um, they're getting some good um, good reviews on it. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually kind of looking forward to seeing it. So that's awesome. What, what are we going to talk about today? Fran all right. Well, wise? I had somebody the other day ask me, you know, we we're talking a little bit about the difference between service-based businesses and facility-based businesses. So, so we're going to talk today about why would you invest in a service-based business? Right. So we're going to kind of answer that question because I get that question every once in a while. And um, we're going to actually kind of go through the pros and cons of investing in a service based business. Now, let's lay the, the platform here a little bit from the terms of the definition of a, a service based business. Right. So you're providing a product or service to homeowners or businesses. So you're going to the customers. Right. So yep. they're, they're coming to my house and washing my windows. They're coming to my business and washing my windows. So bottom line is, is a service based business that is going to a home or business owner. Sound good? Yeah. Yeah. It's also, you can kind of think of it like um, a lot of times it's like truck based, you know, you might yeah. have trucks so that you can get there wherever you're going. Right. Absolutely. Trucks and crews, a great example of that stuff. So, and I know you over the years have actually owned multiple different service-based businesses. You actually uh, started one, right? If I remember correctly, you started do care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was um, kind of on a whim and it ended up being like one of my best businesses, ironically. The, yeah. Um, so do care was uh, pooper scooper service. And um, <laughs> I could use that right about now, but you know, I know. and uh, we set it up. So we would come either once a week or twice a week to uh, kind of walk the entire yard and pick up and remove all the dog waste. And uh, we were also very environmentally friendly. This was back in 2006. So kind of like on the cutting edge of all that, yeah. but I thought it was great. You know, I set up the technology and like, just like the franchises do, you know, you set up the technology so that you can have kind of an entry level employee doing it. And I think our guys at the time were going about 30 yards a day. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, let's talk a little bit about the pros of a service-based business, right? So, so one of uh, the pros that I look at is they tend to be lower investments because you're not building out a facility. You, you see that, right? I mean, it's, it's generally the total investments about half what it would be if you were to invest in a facility-based concept. Yeah. And the other thing too is, um, you know, say maybe the startup, the range for the startup investments, like 200,000, but you're also going to kind of, you're going to have some startup costs, but then you're going to be dripping in your capital like a little bit each month so that, you know, it's not like 200,000, like in the first 90 days, it's going to be, you know, some startup and then it's going to be, you know, maybe five or 10,000, you know, working capital. Um, and then hopefully as you're 
book of business is growing, then you know you're dripping less in. Uh, so you're you're going from in the red, a lot in the red, a lot in the red to a little less, and then you start to get to break even, and then you get in, you know, start making money. Um, yeah. So it's like a, over time you're dripping that money in. Yeah, I always look at it as I tell people the minimum kind of total investment for a service-based business is something greater than a hundred thousand, right? So generally speaking, the investment is uh, you know over a hundred thousand. We talk about facility-based concepts because you're building out those facilities, and the number is you know closer to two hundred thousand, something greater than two hundred thousand. So um, yeah. you know there's a big difference, and absolutely in the way in which you deploy the capital because when you're building that facility, you got to put that money up front, right? So for well, sure. And I think the other nice thing too, like for guys like me that have a pretty short attention span, like, you know, like when I bought my first franchise, I kind of went through the exploration process of trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And then I settled on senior care. I went to their corporate headquarters for the discovery day and all that. And then I was excited about it. So I'm like, I signed up and went to training and then uh, was able to have my doors open, you know, just like literally probably 60 days after I started the investigation process. Right. So I think the um, kind of that faster time to launch because you're, I mean, you can literally, a lot of times you can kind of get the ball rolling from your home office, even while you're trying to get, you know, if you need to get a small office or things like that, facility right. based, you're going to, you know, kind of have, find a place, get a, sign a lease, construction, you know, all those type of things. So it's so take a little longer to get open. Well, yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, you take a look at a service business, to your point, you could sign and go to training and be open right after that, right? So it's mm -hmm. two months. Mm -hmm. You know, you start talking about a facility-based concept, you could be looking for that facility for six months, mm -hmm. build out, you know, and you start going into your, you could be a year before you open up. So yeah. it's pretty substantial uh, for sure. So faster uh, time to launch, got it. What about this idea of it's easier to scale, right? Mm -hmm. It just takes less time and capital to scale. Have you seen yeah. that? Totally. Like, um, you know, our buddy Troy that has the hood, uh, kitchen hood vent cleaning business, right? It's, he's just very like mathematical or very methodical. So, you know, he has, uh, you know, say he's got three crews, uh, three trucks, three crews. Then you start to get to, you know, your guys start working overtime and then you, you know, you add in, you know, hire another guy, start to get them trained, get a fourth truck, you know, another crew going. So it's just kind of a nice business model where you can, you know, you have a lot of control. And you can kind of systematically grow your top line sales, have advancement for your employees. Uh, I think a lot of it kind of does hinge on, you know, doing some of that outbound sales and marketing um, yeah, in order to grow, yeah. grow. But. Yeah, sure. So when you, when you talk about this um, easier to scale, right, to build out a facility, it's a lot more capital to build out that second one. It takes time. And so it's to your point, easier to add a truck and cruise like our buddy Troy does. Right. So yeah. for sure. What about this? Um, with a service-based business, you, you kind of the sky's the limit, right? So when you have a facility-based concept, you're, you're constrained by the facility size, right? Um, so you can only have so many people. But with a service-based business, you don't really have those capacity constraints. Right. Just literally hours in the day, I guess, you know, like, to, yeah. you know, can your employees service all your customers or, or can you find and recruit, hire and train, you know, more, more employees so you can scale, keep on scaling up. Yeah, I mean, it's just easier. It's you can you can do that. Where with a facility, if you've only got seats for forty people, that's it, right? Right. You know, or a yoga class, you can't all of a sudden make room for another twenty people. With a yeah. service based business, you can expand your crews and and certainly your territory, right? For sure. Well, and I think too, one thing that people need to kind of think through is their territory. Um, I know when I bought my first one, I was in my twenties, my first franchise. I was in my twenties, so I kind of. Um, didn't understand, you know, everything about the territory, but I think it's important that you figure out, you know, what your income goals are and then figure out a territory. So you get a, you know, big enough piece of turf so that you can, you can grow and scale the business. I had, I bought one territory and the people adjacent to me had, I think one had like three territories and one had like five territories. So I just kind of ended up, you know, like there's the donut I was like the hole in the toilet. <laughs> I was surrounded like a, like I had a moat. So that's, you know, in order to scale up, you do need to kind of have that territory insurance or get enough territories to make sure that you can get to that. You know, if you're looking to get to, uh, you know, three to 5 million, you might need a little bigger territory. Yeah. Right. So you got to understand what you want to do financially, and then you got to figure out what it's going to take in terms of scale. And mm -hmm. in this case, the number of territories. Absolutely. What about when we talk about service-based businesses? I sometimes think that service-based businesses are more needs-based. 
right? Like if I need to have my driveway redone, I, I got to get it done opposed to, let's say I'm kind of hungry, like a, a sub sandwich or I want to take a Pilates class, right? Bottom yeah. line is they, I think sometimes they tend to be more needs based when we talk about service. It seems to me um, like everything has become needs based these days. You know, I was thinking the genius of like Jimmy John's and Panera, like, you know, people don't seem to cook at home anymore. And the same thing. Even- Are you been, have you been talking to my wife? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, even like with maid service, you know, it's like I have this saying that I heard a long time ago that I really like, and it's a luxury once enjoyed becomes a necessity. So I think with a lot of these service businesses, whether it's, you know, window washing, you know, um, mowing your grass, uh, maid service, painting, like, you know, people just prefer to write the check and have somebody else do it. It always looks better when someone else does it, I notice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely when it comes to my lawn or or cleaning the house, for sure. All right. So there's a lot of pros to investing in a service based business, but what about some of the cons? Are there any ones that you think about, you know, what would be the first one you think about as as we think about the cons? We touched on a little bit earlier, but just kind of the finding, recruiting and training and retaining, you know, long-term keeping your employees. So trying to find the right employees and then, um, you know, do you find that they have to be more skill based? Like if I if I have a, a franchise that they're doing uh, flooring or they're painting or they're doing tree trimming and stuff like that, they, they tend to be uh, more of a specialized skill. Yeah, I think so. Also, one thing that franchises are really good about is training, you know, putting together a training programs. So sometimes like, you know, blacksmith uh, franchises, you might be able to like actually just train somebody that's really good with their hands into becoming you know, to be a locksmith. So that would be one thing I would ask the franchisor for sure is like, what's their training program for, you know, the people doing the work, right? Yeah, because if you're going to need the high skilled uh, people, highly skilled people, then hopefully they've got a good training program. Okay, what else there, you know, when we talk about a service space business, I think a little bit about there's more moving parts, right? Spinning plates, uh, moving parts, right? It's just uh, sometimes the operations can be more complicated because you got trucks and crews. Do you see that? Yeah, I mean, you know, with senior care, you could end up with hundreds of 12 to $15 an hour employees, right? And then it's a very much a 24 seven business. So I think those are the things you just have to figure out what your appetite is with, um, you know, being able to manage or put together that kind of team. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What about, you know, when we talk about the different levels of investing in a franchise, most of the people, the candidates we work with are executives mm-hmm. and they want the executive model and you can be involved in the business full time. So although you're not spraying lawns or stand behind the counter, you're involved in the business 40 or 50 hours a week, right? So there's full time and then there's semi absentee where maybe I put a manager in place that watch over that manager 15 to 20 hours a week. Do you see that with service based businesses, there are just less kind of uh, semi-absentee opportunities or simply put more service-based businesses require you to be involved in it full-time? I think through the uh, startup process, which is probably 18 months to three years, it's more, it's, it's better to be involved probably, you know, 30, 40, 50 hours a week to build the business because a lot of it's relationships. So you're, you know, you have to build your book of business. Also have to get your uh, management team in place, but the sweet thing is once you get it all built, can, you can dial it way back to maybe just, you know, a cup, couple, maybe five hours a week or something like that. But that's going to be maybe three, four, five years down the road. Yeah, I see a lot of service-based franchises require the franchisees to be involved in a full-time yeah. for, for an extended period of time, right? Where there are um, there are some service-based businesses, but you see a lot of facility-based businesses allow you to start out semi-absentee, right? Where you don't have to be there every yeah. day. You still need to mind your team. So It's kind of sure. like you're either, like with facility, you're deploying your capital. And with service, you're kind of deploying your time a little bit. So yeah. it's like almost like a yeah. sweat. I don't want to say sweat equity, but it's just, it's your, I mean, a service business a lot of times is the owner to some extent because it is relationship oriented. Yeah, absolutely. And I always kind of tell people that when they, when we look at a service business, the sales are tend to be a little bit tougher, right? Mm-hmm. So when you got that facility-based concept, somebody walks to the door and all you have to do is just take care of them, mm-hmm. right? When we have a service-based business, we're generally going out to people's homes or businesses. And, and that's, that's a, I think in my opinion, that might be a tougher sale. What, what are your thoughts on that? Um, do, 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 do. 
think just part of it is like when you think about an orange theory or something like that, people just know, know the brand and they, that kind of like brings them in the door with service. You know, a lot of times you're, you have to kind of find your customers. If it's B2B, you know, you're building those relationships to get those recurring referrals or, or what have you. Yeah. But I think I always, you know, sometimes like you think about a painting franchise, right? It's like, oh my God, that's like super competitive. I would never want to do that. But I, you know, in my experience, I haven't been afraid or have, you know, I don't think you should be too afraid of competition. I think that's actually a good thing. It means that there's yes. lots of, there's lots of customers there. Um, and so you needed to do a good job, fight and then get in there, fight and do a, you know, do a better job. And sometimes doing a better job, sad to say, is just answering the phone. <laughs> some, some, <laughs> that's yeah, some, you know, businesses won't, don't even answer the phone. And that's the nice thing too, with franchises, you get the, a lot of times you get call center and appointment yep. schedulers all like kind of virtual for you. So that helps out a lot. Yeah. What about service-based businesses? You know, they tend to be larger transactions, right? Like if I walk in and I get a sub sandwich or I get a haircut at a facility-based concept, they, th those are, they're not emotional and they're lower transactions. But if I'm looking to have my roof redone or my driveway done, those are substantial investments. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm more emotionally attached to them. Yeah. No, that's totally true. I guess I kind of like the bigger transactions. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I think that's right. So, um, so that can be a pro or con, right? There's more emotional attachment to it, but also um, it's always nice to have a larger transactions. So, so as we think about investing in a service-based business, there are many pros and there's uh, certainly some cons to it. So, um, but I, I like the ease of the service-based business, the lower investment, the faster time to market uh, from that standpoint. In, in many cases, willing to take on the cons just because I think there's so many pros yeah. to it. Yeah, I just grabbed my calculator. And like, for example, with senior care, like, you know, a lot of people have 24 seven care where you have hourly care every hour of the, of the week. So 168 hours. So if you, you know, if you had a senior care business and you got a customer or a client that had 24 hour care, that would equal about $250,000 of revenue per year. One customer. Mm -hmm. And quite frequently, those customers will have you for, I would say, nine, nine months to three to five years even. Holy cow. So the bigger I gotta transactions. Start I got to start saving my <laughs> pennies for uh, uh, hit care here, it looks like. Yes. So. That's, yep. Excellent. Well, Nat, thank you so much. Uh, it was a pleasure uh, having uh, the opportunity to talk this through with you today. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll catch you next Good week. Good luck with that maquis and the, uh, the plaid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. Thanks for listening to the Hire Yourself podcast. For more resources, check out our website at hireyourself.com. And remember to subscribe to this podcast to receive each episode. Please leave us a rating and we'd love to hear your feedback or suggestions for topics.